Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Rogue Wave podcast, the frequency for all things pop culture and the disruptors behind it. We talk comics, movies, TV, and pop culture every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, right here on facebook.com slash rogue matter podcasts. Podcast available immediately after the live stream on all major podcasting apps, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. Join the movement. Go rogue, roguematter.com. I'm your host, Michael Dolce, joined by my co-host extraordinaire, Mr. Hassan Godwin. How you doing, sir? How do you be a co-host extraordinaire? Like, what is um, what is extraordinaire about? Is it? Is it? You just... show up. Oh, you're here. All right then. Okay. Consistency. Well, let's see. That's a low bar. I can. I could. I could deal with a low bar. <laughs> I, could, I could do it. I could do low bar real easily, as as everyone who's known me has has said. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say, uh, under promise <laughs> over deliver can't go wrong yeah, exactly can't go wrong life right, life excellent. is a series of expectations um and meeting and or exceeding <laughs> and, them <laughs> or or failing to meet them hey look you know my comic the mainstream sold out issue one i don't ever tell anyone how many we actually printed up <laughs> wow dude that's that was a reveal that wasn't even necessary. I know. It was a little slice of yourself that wasn't it's even. It's okay. Series is, that series is, uh, is, is three years old. Two more years, I get the oh. rights back. It's very exciting. But now we have to wonder about all your current projects. So that's what, No, they that's, sell that out. Cast. They're huge. They're huge. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I mean, actually, you know, all my current projects end up on Kickstarter first. So... Um, you can literally just yeah, see. it's it's something it's something it's very uh, transparent. It's, 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 it's it, very the transparent. data is very crunchable. You that being said, there that will data. be um, now thanks to uh, you know the reopenings and uh, the vaccine and and a and a uh, journey toward normal life. Um, I can the rogue matter machine is is back on schedule again as well, and there will be some stuff in stores. I would think come twenty twenty two. So you know. We'll see. See how those sales that that happened that I won't tell you how many we actually print up. It'll be very exciting. When that All right. We, we've been uh, looking forward to this one for a while. And uh, it is according to Men's Health, which never lies. They're very, very <laughs> truthful. It is Netflix's um, most popular title right now. And that is as of May 10th. It was so right trending now, number one. Number one uh, when I when was on Netflix yeah. last night. So, so that bodes well um, for creator Mark Miller. And his Netflix universe, Miller World. Is it Miller or Miller? No, it's Miller. It is actually Miller. Okay, I've been so corrected numerous times. Of, hundreds of people have been saying it wrong. Oh, absolutely, and, yes, yes. Yeah, okay, all right. Yes. Not me though. I've been getting it right. Yes, time. and and amazingly I, enough, I I've never said names. it. I keep avoiding, it, so that's why I always get it right. Yeah, I butcher names all the time, and amazingly, I get this yes. one right. But uh, we are talking about the new superhero series, Jupiter's Legacy. Uh, mm -hmm. We actually have one of the stars from the show. Um, Mr. Tyler Maine coming on after uh, this segment as well to kind of talk about his role as uh, as Black Star. I got to be honest, as I've been preparing uh, promotional material for you know this week's show, I keep wanting to say Battle Star, and then I and then I'll go Google it to find some imagery and Falcon and Winter Soldier keep coming up, and I'm like, oh, yeah, no, it's Black Star. Got to remember that. <laughs> it's not. It's not Battle Star. Um, so he'll be it joining. Be, us it would be. Very old school comics. If they reverse those, yeah, because then because then he would be Black Star. And very that's not very school. ironic, actually. Right? Yeah, that's like yeah. that's old school Super Friends kind of stuff, right? Yeah, with the yeah. you know what? A, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, I, 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 I you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. I'm. I, I can't. I can't denote the. I can't <laughs> de uh, deny the irony in that one. Actually. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, so uh, he'll be joining us next segment to kind of go a little bit behind the scenes, talk about everything. Um, we had a creator. We had one. Uh, um, we had someone from the show on a few weeks ago, uh, Courtney James, uh, who sent me a video. I'll have to send it to you. Uh, he is one of the photographs on the wall in, uh, George, in George's mansion. Uh, it's it's really it's 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 actually pretty awesome. Maybe I'll maybe All I'll, right. I'll, I'll that's a, it that's a cool cameo. It that's is though, right? He's like, here's my cameo in the in the show, and yeah. it's a picture yeah. of him on the wall. <laughs> you can't beat it though. I mean, there no, was no you really way... can't. And I'm wondering, did someone actually have to paint? Like, did they commission an artist to paint a picture of him, or did they just Photoshop that? Uh, it's something he only he'll know. Yeah, I think we gotta we gotta get that from the horse's mouth. Yeah, we'll have him, we'll have him back on the show. But we got Tyler Maine coming up next segment. Uh, but first, we want to dive into our reaction now again. 
I, I, I got turned on to this by friend of the show. I got to be honest with you. Dave Rosenberg, uh, Rosie, had uh, had mentioned this. We, we kind of talked about shows that are com- I think this is a segment we did. I don't even know if we did it as Rogue Wave or the podcast previous to this. You know, comics we'd like to see adapted. Right. And uh, and he had he had said Jupiter's Legacy. And I'm like, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> like, no idea. So it was a it was a 2014 image comic book, uh, maybe even 2013. Let me. I think it's uh, I think it's 2014. It was it was an image comic book that came out in the early 2010s, uh, and it's about a superhero family, and it deals with the you know living up to your family's expectations and changing of generations and changing of uh, social mores. And it also asks the questions you know should superheroes do more right? Like that's something that's also um, it, it's not really broken down yet in the Netflix series um, as much as the question of whether superheroes should kill or not, if, whether you should have a code or not. Uh, but in the comic book, you know, it really asks the questions, you know, should superheroes literally be running things because they're the most powerful, um, you know, and, and, and theoretically could, right? Like there's nothing really stopping them, um, you know, even if they're trying to do good, right? That was something that, that was kind of brought up. The show, immediately my first reaction when I was watching it was, wow, they didn't adapt the comic at all for the most part right the comic book is written like a movie um it's 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 a six issue it's a very succinct three act six issue um miniseries and it essentially reads very quickly it also reads again as if mark was was writing a feature film which again back in 2013 back in 2014 and 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 interviews with him suggest he's been writing this for many many years prior to when it actually got released, we didn't have streaming services like we do right now. We didn't have this like, you know, golden age of TV that we have right now. Right. And so my immediate reaction was, uh, I was a little taken aback. I both was a little upset because I'm sitting there going, well, this isn't in the comics. This isn't in the comics. But then I was just kind of like, but it fits exactly in between the comics. Everything that you, that you watch in the eight episodes, and we'll try to be spoiler free as much as possible. We won't, um, we won't, dice, we won't divulge the uh, cliffhanger ending as all Netflix shows have. It literally gives you stuff that's not in the comic book, but might as well have been, or could have been. And Mark is, a, you know, Mark Miller is one of the producers. He's one of the consultants. So you got to imagine the stuff that we're seeing in here, you know, has his blessing. Whether or not he wrote it, uh, whether or not he you know, uh, had planned it exactly like that, but almost in a jar- George R.R. R. Martin sense has his blessing. And so you get to see, you know, whereas in the comic, you know, Brandon is already disenchanted with everything that's going on with with his father. Uh, yeah. Chloe is actually kind of the same, um, but you see her relationship with Hutch is already fast forwarded. So you're yeah. you're actually getting the stuff in between and I'll and I'll phrase it exactly like this volume two and volume one, because volume two was actually a prequel that that details all of the uh, older superheroes life the as origins. a superhero yeah. throughout the, you know, throughout the 40s, 50s, 60s and 70s and 80s and 90s and 2000s prior to volume one, which is set in the 2010s uh, and kind of details that. So. It took me a second to kind of. Just embrace that we're getting stuff we never got in the comics but i also think it's it's its own undoing in the sense that i'm waiting for reveals that i know are going to happen what 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 was your initial reaction uh to the way they set up the pacing and and the way you know how they chose to tell you know where they chose to start this story i had I had somewhat the same reaction as you um, because I know that the the story is very different. So that opened up a lot of possibilities of, you know, okay, so maybe so-and-so will survive. Maybe Mm so-and-so will die. Maybe, you know, Um, pacing wise, I didn't think it was, I didn't think it was uh, terrible. It's so hard to put my finger on it. It just doesn't do anything. That's my main 
critique of the whole thing. Like right. it, it has this, it has a, um, it has a very long drawn out, which was good. I, I like the way they fleshed it out. Very long and drawn out uh, origin story mm-hmm. for the main characters. Uh, and it seems like it does. It didn't. It it doesn't take uh, cues from what we've learned from some comic book movie adaptations, mm-hmm. like say like Green Lantern or whatever, where the the entire story, you know, like the first forty minutes of the story is like the origin, and then mm-hmm. the, the last ten minutes of the story is uh is is some action sequence. You know, like modern modern stories take a cue from, say, maybe 1989's Batman, where Batman was already Batman. Right. You know? And then you get a little bit of a flashback of, you know, his, the, his origin story to the point where his parents died. But you still don't know how he amassed all the little trinkets and toys in the Batmobile right. and learned how to fight. You know, that's if there's another story, there'll be more. If there's not, you could deduce uh, the, you know, the, the, the in-between stuff mm-hmm. on your own. So like this one kind of does both. It kind of starts it off in the in right in the beginning where there are yeah. superheroes and they already have their powers, but then it starts to elaborate on where they got their powers from. Yeah. But it takes it it takes a long time to get to that stuff. Yeah. And there's a lot of pathology that that goes on especially in the 1920s with the 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 1920s uh stock market crash mm-hmm. that ultimately killed uh uh Sheldon's father. Sheldon's father. Yep. Yeah. But it doesn't it doesn't really um, emotionally pay any of that off. It just kind of tells you, you know, that these guys are scarred in some way. Right. These guys are psychologically scarred. There's, you know, there's a strain in relationships. But because we don't really get to see them in action in the contemporary time, you don't really see how any of those threads are paying off. You yeah. know, you know, you get I mean, there's they are there's, really two separate storylines. Yeah. Totally. And they don't they don't kind of tie together very right. well. And, you know, it's it's, of course, well, that's for future seasons to elaborate on. Right. But, you know, I just watched eight hours of this stuff, you know, and um, and that whereas I didn't have a terrible time watching it, it wasn't I wasn't I didn't think it was a waste of time. I didn't dislike it. I didn't strongly dislike it. Right. But it's a superhero story with a with a with its own version of justice league right and there's not a lot of stuff that happens also it it kind of refuses to introduce us to any of the new superheroes it doesn't tell us who they are until they get killed right you know it doesn't it doesn't set up the stakes it doesn't like there's no sequence where they're all sitting around the round table and the younger ones are arguing hey it's kind of it's kind of rough out there. We gotta we gotta right kind of alter the parameters of our mission statement, right? Mm-hmm. And and it doesn't do that. So you'll see a superhero come out. One of them in in the in the in you know the best sequence in the entire series, which is the Black Star sequence. Mm-hmm. You see the stakes. Yeah, <laughs> you see the stakes. You see like you know kind of a clash of the titans kind yeah. of situation. Um, but that's the only that's the only really big sequence you have mm-hmm. in the story. So, I mean, that the trailer, I remember, I remember seeing that trailer when we reviewed it a couple of weeks ago. And I remember it being like, wow, this is, this looks really interesting. You know, like really looks like they nailed the source material. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they leaned into it with the costumes. They leaned into it yeah. with the, uh, you know, um, with Sheldon looks exactly like he did, you know, like, like, yeah, yeah. like, uh, like uh, you know, they they called him Santa Claus Superman in the you know in the show, so um, it's just a, I have a weird reaction to it. I have a kind of I don't know how I feel about it. That's, that's yeah, where I'm coming out to it. What's interesting about this series in comparison to let's say The Boys and Invincible, which uh, you know is stuff that that it, there's a lot of superhero stuff in the market. First of all. Right. There's a lot of superhero stuff in, you know, I mean, even just take the Zack Snyder Justice League. Right. I mean, that's essentially a long streaming series as well in and of itself. Right. And then you have Invincible, the cartoon show, and then you have the the boys, the boys and Invincible, less Invincible. Invincible is more like Jupiter's Legacy. The boys is a parody of superheroes. 
this you think on the surface is a parody because it has its own Superman and its own Wonder Woman. And it's kind of a mix between like Justice League and Fantastic Four because you have like the first family and, and things like that. But it's actually a real straightforward superhero story. And that's something that, you know, was interesting about reading the comics, because when you read that first volume, it automatically assumes you know and read superhero comics. Right. So you already know who this guy is. You know, this is the Superman. You know, this is this. And by doing it that way, there's an expectation, I think, from audiences. And we'll get into the reviews that that people have had so far, um, which have been mixed. People are, I think, assuming we're going to get an offbeat take on the superhero mythos. We're going to get. Oh, there! This is the version of Superman because they're going to tell it in a completely different way, and it's like, no, they basically just told you a Superman story if he happened to get married and have kids. You're like, that's essentially what it is. Um, getting back to the earlier point, though, about the to me the most interesting part of the show was the island, and and in the comics he opens up immediately with the island, right? And they don't get into any of this that he's seeing his father. Uh, that he's kind of crazy. You know, they actually say like, well, when Sheldon says something, we follow him. You know, <laughs> it was almost like that's that's the, you know, in the comics, uh, because how else is he going to explain all this stuff? Right. So, again, kind of neat to see all the events leading up to it, that it wasn't just so much as when Sheldon says we go, um, you know, and, and, and tweaking some of the characters uh, like Flair and um, and Blue Bolt. You know, like tweaking them and tweaking their origins and where they come from. You know, it, again, I suppose so. But I mean, I don't know if there was a reason for us to see to know that Sky Fox prefers like seventy eight different kinds of hard boiled eggs. Yeah, I you yes, know? that's There's, true. There are there are certain things that it really indulged in. Yeah, that just don't that was seem like padding. It was like remember the um the the cartoon adaptation of the Killing Joke. Okay. Yeah. Remember, like the entire the love the love story between Bat Batgirl and and Batman. Yes, you know that that. Oh yes, yes, know, yes. And it was like, why, you know, like this doesn't add anything to the story at all. Right. It doesn't it's... change. In fact, it makes everybody. It makes Batman look even more sketchy <laughs> because he doesn't he doesn't do anything to the Joker at the end because we know how the story ends. Right. right? So. If it's not going to go any further than that, it's not going to be like the ultimate showdown between Batman and and the Joker. Right. Right. So if he has an ambiguous relationship with Batgirl, you can understand the, com the complexity of the situation. Mm -hmm. And he goes, you know, he goes to try to get this guy off the street, but he's going to follow his bat code. But they because they threw a potential romance in there. Mm -hmm. Now he just comes off as cold. Yeah. You know, like, so it's, it's like, this didn't serve its purpose. It actually made the, the source material more ambiguous, you know, less, yeah. less fleshed out more, you know, uh, it, it, it made it more questionable, mm -hmm. right. It added more questions to it. it. It betrayed the complexity of it because the complexity of the relationship between Batman and the Joker is, is pretty much a driving force behind that, that rivalry mm -hmm. between them. But then it's like, well, does he love the Joker more? You know, like it's just, it's just, it. All the conclusions become weird instead of this is complicated. It just becomes really strange, right? So, um, this it's kind of the same with Jupiter's Legacy, where the stuff that they did flesh out doesn't really pay off. You know, like you, yeah. get, you get a rivalry between um between Selden and. Uh, and the the woman who would eventually become Grace, his wife, yeah. mm -hmm. Grace. But there's no hint of the romance between them as they right. travel, right? It's, it, in fact, it starts out Sheldon has a completely different wife, right? Right? He loses the wife because he's starting to to go skizzy, right? Right? But they don't they don't really sow seeds of them having a romance, right? They they overbuild uh, George and. Um, and his brother, I forget his brother's name. Walt. Uh, Walt. Oh, no, no, sorry, no. Yeah, Walt. Walt. Yeah. They overbuild that rivalry because it wasn't, first of all, it wasn't really hinted at because it seemed like George was just a family friend who just came around right. every now and then. And then suddenly they don't like each other to the point where they can't even get their powers right. until they reconcile. 
it's like, well, where did that even come from? Yeah. Where did this, and why is Walt, why is George in the mix so much that it's affecting Walt so much yeah. that he can't, he can't reconcile with it. So there are, there are things about it, yeah. even though they add the padding to it, all the, all the, the fleshed out information just ask more questions and they don't even hint and answering any of those questions. Yeah. You and, know, and that's eight the part episodes. That's the part that kills me too, because as a fan of the comic, I know the answers to some of these questions and, but I don't disagree with you at all. And it's weird the way they decided again, going back to the original point that I was, that I opened the show with. I, it was a dubious choice to fill in the blanks of something to where in the original comic, Imagine they opened up that they're on the island. Imagine they're opening up like imagine they started the show with them, you know, guns pointed at each other, you know, uh, you know, rain batting down on them and then in, in through the clearing and they see the island, you know, then it flashes forward to them being a superhero. You know, then, you know, there's like this end point uh, coming because it's it's directly tied and directly tied together. The comic does that. You get the sense of like, wow, they got to this cool island and there's this cool stuff happening. And, and uh, you know, and, and and it's. It's just it's 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 more forced. It's a more deliberate, you know, um, execution only because, again, it was only six issues. So they kind of you know had to press the point, but you kind of get all that stuff and you get the, you know, the rivalry, you get all this other stuff that um, that it, to your point doesn't get flushed out in this in the way they decided to do this. Yeah, and it just it just leaves questions, but then they don't fill those holes with other things. Like, yeah. say if there was like, if there was a rip roaring action in it, and I'm not even calling for action. I'm not even an action hawk. Like, there's not even any car chases in this story. It's, <laughs> it sucks. I'm not even saying that, but I mean, say they filled the the blanks with with events, the, the, with eventful things. Yeah. You know, other than people talking about the code, you know. You got to you're supposed to feel that like you've got to yeah. show us how rough the world is and how these how the younger superheroes are having a hard time living up to the code. You got to show us that you can't yeah. just keep telling us we're having a hard time living up to this code. And then every now and then one of them gets killed. But yeah. you don't even see the action that got them killed mostly. Yeah. And so you're like, mm, you know, I don't even know why. Yeah. This is a, I mean, has this, has this, is this the way it's always been or is it just getting this bad? You know, right. I don't, it did, it didn't, it didn't really set that up. Now, uh, to be a, fair in, a, in the comics, they don't set it up either. They really don't. And, and to, to the show's credit, um, we actually get a bigger sense of Brandon's role and how, he, uh, you know, and how he is shaping up in the series rather than the comics In the comics. You're just basically kind of like, yeah, you know, he's already just. Well, Sorry, well, good. that'll that'll bring us to the point that the comic's not really well told either. You know, yeah. you're supposed to show, right. not tell. Right? It's all telling. It's all saying. You know, this and that. You, it's in, it's, it's for, especially in a comic book. You don't have a budget in a comic book, right? You can show us everything. You know, you don't have to cut corners. Frank Quietly is very like expensive, that. though. He's <laughs> a very expensive artist. Very slow too. He doesn't doesn't deliver a lot of. Okay. Limited amount. But no, I agree. I agree to the I agree in that sense of the comic seemed rushed, but at least what it did was give you, I think, more establishing points more than what the show did, you know, through eight episodes. Even though it could have because it chose to give you all this stuff that leads up to it. So you know, that one's that one's pretty fascinating to me. All right. Fair enough. But, you know, so. <laughs> I mean, I said, I said my piece on it, you know. Let me, let me um, ask you another question, too. Um, one thing I did like is you get to go deeper into Hutch. Again, he really didn't get a lot of, of, of screen time in the comic, right, or panel time in the comic. Um, but his relationship with Chloe is already established. You know, you're really, you're already well you know, you know, well, kind of versed at that um, here, you get to really see, you know, the kind of life he leads. And I thought he was like, for me, one of the breakout characters like that. I really like I enjoy like anytime he was on screen, I, I for the most part didn't really 
sink in as much with the present day storyline with the superheroes as much as I enjoyed the, you know, Sheldon's story, you know, in trying to find the island because I think I think the island is is one of the um, you know, more fascinating elements to the whole origin story. But in the present day, anytime Hutch was on screen, I was like, okay. Like I'm glued in, I'm glued in to see what I'm glued in to see, you know, more of him, the actor and and the storylines. Who was you was there a was there a, a character? you know, that, that you could, that, that was, that gave you that, you know, it was like, I want to see everything about this character. Not really. Um, no, maybe Sky Fox. And ironically, he yeah. wasn't in the show, you know, for the <laughs> most part, you never see him as a superhero. Yeah. Um, whether he went good or bad in this particular yeah. iteration, you know, you see Hodge, his son, he's constantly looking for him, you know, but you don't, you don't it does and it and it's very vague in what happened to Sky Fox, other than he turned on them and became right. a supervillain. Right. You know? Like it's like it's like Yatsuki. Um the 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 cartoon, the 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 anime cartoon with the mm-hmm. black samurai. I felt as a quick review of that, I felt that the flashbacks that they showed us in the intermix with the, the contemporary story was a better story. Yeah. You know? So like you know, hang this hang whatever he's doing now show me the you know the the story of his origin because it seems like there was more meat to that story than what we what we're seeing this is the same thing with uh, jupiter's legacy like i didn't i didn't really like the origin story too much because i thought it dragged on way mm-hmm. too long it didn't get to the point um however at least all the characters were there by the time yeah. they get their powers and you get to episode 7 um and you see them all together, you realize, wait, some of these guys are missing, you know, from the, from all the other stories, you know, all the other episodes prior. So what happened to those guys and what are their powers? You know, like I, what is, what is their interaction with each other? You, you went to see, you know, you, you went through all this uh, trouble with them to see how they, they interacted with each other to get their powers in the first place. Yep. And then the minute they get their powers, the show ends, you know, Pretty yep. much the show end. So you're like, all right, I still don't know who most of the union are. You know, I don't know what their their powers in connection with each other are. I don't know. You know, I don't know why the code is important. I understand the morality of the code. You know, I understand it. And like that, that as you said, that does put it um, that does put it in a class of its own beyond uh uh, beyond invincible and the boys that there is a moral code it doesn't it doesn't say what if what if the you know what if these were the uh the justice league but bent you know it doesn't it doesn't really play that trope it's actually trying to keep that from happening right right so it does do that but it doesn't every it really in my opinion doesn't lean into anything that could make it exceptional it doesn't lean into the fact that it's a superhero story. It doesn't lean into the inter- interconnectivity with all the characters to, to, to make them all three-dimensional. It doesn't really lean into the, the Hutch and, and uh, what's her name's storyline. It, 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 it advances it more than the comic books did, mm-hmm. but it doesn't really... I mean, it's just a whole bunch of sex scenes. And then... <laughs> and then, and then Chloe, you know, Chloe was my least favorite. Yeah, post post cordial cordial uh, yeah. discussions about the you know the Romeo and Juliet kind of situation of mm-hmm. being from you know villains and and heroes, but it doesn't really go, you. By the time you realize, and this is sort of by the time you realize she really has feelings for him, you're like, where'd that come from? You yeah. know, that kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah. Um. Also, that that Hutch doesn't have any. He didn't inherit any powers from his. You know, that is from his dad. You know, right. Uh, so, you know, as as opposed to Chloe, who, you know, they they inherited her and uh, uh, Paragon mm-hmm. inherited quite a bit, apparently, um, to, you know, to potentially be the replacements for their parents. So it, it just it's really good. Um, it's real. The money is on the screen. It has, has a lot of potential going somewhere, but it is reliant. It did very much rely on future iterations of the story it relied on future seasons you know it didn't yeah that's it didn't, thing that, is, is it that didn't a set us thing, up though? with a full i don't know i i just think it's a bad idea i think you can you can definitely leave, leave us with a cliffhanger but don't 
don't, you know, don't uh, Maz Kanata the whole situation. Well, oh, it's a good question. I guess we'll answer <laughs> it another time. You know, that's that's not the way you tell stories. You know, and I'm I I'm very rigid about this. I um I try to be flexible about it. I respect that people like it. You know, like the I respect people like the the Star Wars sequels, just mm-hmm. like I will respect it. You know, and I didn't even really dislike Jupiter's Legacy at all, at all. But I am. I am I'm, I am tired of, of getting skeletons of stories instead. of Well, stories. it's funny too you say that. So the reviews have been mixed. We kind of mentioned that earlier. Um, if you type in Jupiter Legacy's reviews, uh, it's it's not it's less <laughs> it's it's more dislike than than uh, than mixed. But I but I did see some stuff that was positive. But the ones that jump out, uh, Netflix superhero series doesn't make a lick of sense. Uh, <laughs> Jupiter's Legacy is getting pummeled on Rotten Tomatoes. Its Rotten Tomato score is not very good right now. Um, Netflix superhero drama needs some super speed, a stony face superhero saga. Um, you know, again, it's, it's interesting. Then you have stuff. Yeah, about, it like, is the, trending the, number one on Netflix. Right. I and mean, it also be... was, yeah. And it also is, uh, is, you know, has the cliffhanger. That's the next, like, that's the big like buzz on the film, right? Like, yeah. Cliffhanger. We'll have to wait two, three years for, uh, <laughs> yes, for the replacement of, or, it Netflix will just cancel it without even giving us. Right. You know, the, 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 the crazy conclusion. part is. Well, let me tell you right now, they spent a lot of money on uh, Millar World. And so I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to guarantee it. I, I, I will have Tyler on next uh, coming up next, but I almost guarantee we'll have a season two. Like, I don't think there's a I don't think there's a just because they put so much into it. It doesn't it makes sense. Not it doesn't make sense to to bail okay. on it after one uh, season. Superheroes are hot. It's a hot property. You know, I think I think we're definitely going to get a season two. That being said, I think it just goes back to my original point. I wonder if people know how to take how to handle a straightforward superhero story that's not a marvel or dc property you know because when you try to do an off you when you try to do an off beat version of superman you know or or, or like a like a different take on superman everyone sits there and goes i want superman why would you why would you not give me superman but when you try to when you create a superman clone and set him in a clone universe of like the marvel and dc world they're like, well, I don't want this to be just like Superman. I want this to be different. You're giving me something different, so give me something different. I almost feel like this. Oh, you're gonna blame the fans for not for not appreciating what they got. Kinda. I'm not even saying the fans though. I think I think I think because the critics also, um, you know, are kind yeah, of they could be they could all potentially be fans. I mean, it's the true. same thing. You're 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 you're. You, I don't know. I don't know. I've seen the source material, right? I I do mm-hmm. I I do concede that. Modern audiences can be a little too critical and, you know, and and not willing to do a lot of the, the legwork to to comprehend things. They want it all explained to them. And, and the, it, it, it is the level of idiocy that everyone was afraid of 20 years ago when they were starting to dumb down stories in the first place. Right. right. And so now they've taught people to like, no, the story will explain itself. We don't have to, you know, we don't have to right. figure anything out. That's fine. Also, it's the strange dichotomy of. Uh, you know, over speculating everything, right? right? So then you have your own expectations, but you expect everything to be explained to you, but you want everything to be explained to you exactly how you expected it to be explained. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. However, um, it's not a superhero story because the superheroes don't do anything superhero. Correct. So that's why no one, that's why it's like, well, why are we watching these people in these spandex costumes? talk to each other in a room with a round table (laughs) for 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 eight episodes i get it you know like you can do a show like that you can do a show where the superheroes never actually go out and do anything and everything they do is 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 a you know is a you know weighty philosophical debate as to what they should or shouldn't do you can do that you know there are movies where god and and the devil are just playing chess you know and just talking about things it can be done it's been done however you got to make that decision to do that. That's a that's a creative decision. That's a style decision. Mm-hmm. So like you have this situation where you have you open it up with this really good action sequence, right? And it it sort of sets up the stakes really well of how this the sequence is resolved is wrong, you know? Like everyone's mm-hmm. like you shouldn't have done that, right. you know? Okay. Great. So now we're we we have a we have a you know, we have dual uh, uh, philosophies going on here, or we have opposing philosophy. We have the, the son and the father are coming to loggerheads and how things should be. And the father's really hoping that the son is going to take his place and, you know, and, and, yeah. and carry on the tradition and the legacy, but the son is faltering 
in understanding the the you know the 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 importance of the morality of that legacy while mm-hmm. other things are going on then you got to lean into that you got to show us that the world is really rough yeah. and then make make it a philosophical debate that the audience has it's like well wait a minute you know things are pretty bad paragon you know i mean excuse me uh, uh utopian. utopian things are you're the utopian but it's not a utopia right you know so like you we gotta we gotta up the game a little bit or say no i'm it's it's like the civil war argument right we should be you know like iron man's like we should be regulated we should be we should have uh we should have oversight mm-hmm. and captain america's that's not freedom you know like mm-hmm. those are two opposing ideologies that people can understand right whether yeah. or not you agree with them like i get it you which know? i always contend it was the wrong character being on the wrong side in civil war well it doesn't it, i mean it doesn't matter i know we it doesn't matter at this point i just want to bring that up again we yeah <laughs> okay all right it just it just, it just always irked me it just always irked me because it just yeah. it always felt like it didn't, didn't quite feel right. But anyway, I see your point. I, I and, and I raise you a, a Civil War point. Um, but no, I agree with you. I, I think it just is- doesn't it doesn't it doesn't set up any of the stakes. We don't know what the stakes are. We don't know if the kids are just whining mm-hmm. because it would be easier if they could just go out and kill everybody or if it really is a world that's changed so bad that it's actually costly for them to follow this code. And they've said it and they and we and there are a couple of bodies on the deck. But I mean, then they do other really weird tonal things where, you know, like the, the who's the one who's the kid with the the who gets crushed. You don't even know he died till the funeral. Right. Oh, um, uh, in the very beginning, in the very beginning. Yeah. Yeah. No, you well, you knew he. Yeah. Something and, bad. I, I forget. Yeah, but he, 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 but could, he could do his flame hands. And yeah, but they're doing tongue. They're being tongue in cheek about it. And they're being yeah. kind of they're arrogant about it. So that doesn't. That doesn't necessarily that that belies in storytelling language that belies negligence on their part. Yeah. You know, that doesn't really say what's it. Well, we're, we're really taking this situation seriously and we're getting slaughtered for it. Right. Yeah, you, brought, so, you brought something interesting about that, though, too, that just dawned on me. His appearance, that character, which will go unnamed, he'll be flashy hands for right now. Um, he his tone of I'm going to hang back and just let them do it and then I'll get in for the photo op was more of the tone of the original comic you know that that the that the younger generation it wasn't a question that like this this whole question of whether superheroes should kill and how bad the situation was that was never asked in the comic basically utopian had everything under control and his union of justice it's just that the generations had gotten lazier and had gotten more self-obsessed and had gotten more you well, know, okay, that's the comic book, but we're, we're but this no, is no, no. the TV show. There's no, I agree. I, but but for a split second, with that character and only that character, he had that spirit of what the comic book was. And I actually thought to myself, I'm like, oh, okay, they're going to really go into this now. That's great. But I'm saying like that doesn't fit the tone. That didn't no, make doesn't. any sense to the story that they were trying to tell. Agreed. Right? No, agreed. Because, because they you went got in a people saying direction. like this situation is really bad, but then you so did you show one guy like goofing off, right? And the situation can't really be that bad, can it? No, I you agree know? with you hundred percent. I and, but that my point being is what when you said I that because it's different. The I, I understand. I it, I it brought it up, and I'm like, wait a minute. You know, you're right. They they were going in that direction, or at least it seemed because it's the very first interaction you get with these superheroes. But I mean, okay, try and then they don't do that, a, and then it goes into what from, you're saying. From the perspective of someone who hasn't read any of the books, though, because that's what most of that's what ninety percent of the audience were. Yeah. That's why they, I mean, you can every 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 criticism I've given you about it, you've been like, well, in the comic books they explain this and that. Right. Like, it's it's not you can't. No, I agree. I, I, I know, I know. It's tough you too know? because I really enjoyed the comics. Like I really I, and I enjoyed yeah, volume I get two. It, but I, I think even more in volume one. I think they're biasing your ability that not, I, not you, it's yourself. But I mean, I no, think you, you, you might. No, I, I, I'm, I'm, I am um, confident enough in my own skin. I am, I'm comfortable in my own skin to say, I don't know if reading the comic books has been a detriment or a positive. You know, for me, for the leading up to the island, I was like, this is actually really cool because I thought the island was really cool, but I knew they were getting an island. Like I knew exactly where he was going. He made a pit stop in Kansas. I didn't see that coming. I didn't see Kirkwood Smith, uh, you know, famous that 70 show actor, uh, you know, taking yeah, a dramatic turn. And, and, uh, and, I'm not, and it felt it felt it felt very horror movie ish when he's down in the basement, you know, and that's and, what I'm saying. All yeah. the all the offshoots, you know, all the all the side quests and, you know, away yeah. missions and, you know, whatever. 
they did they just didn't amount to anything like it didn't they didn't come together to make sense like yeah i oh, agree that's why you did that or yeah. that's why you made this other it seemed like padding yeah it seems like we need we need eight episodes yeah so how do we flesh this out into yeah. eight episodes and i'm starting to discover in my own work like there's a lot of this stuff is superfluous we don't need it we don't need it we don't need it so it's to me, it's, I mean, it's a slow burn that doesn't need to be slow. And it's a slow burn to get to some place where we didn't really, where, where it doesn't really resolve itself. So it's like, it's slowly burning, it's slowly burning, it's slowly burning, it burns itself out. So you're waiting yeah. the whole, the whole series for the house to catch fire, you know? And, yep. then, and then someone comes at the last minute and pours a bucket of water on it. And you're like, wow, I just spent, I just spent eight hours watching a smolder. That, that someone just kind of stamps out. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I don't know. It There was a chance for it to really, really do something really different. And it to become the breakout, the standout. It's kind of like the first season of uh, the Umbrella Academy, where it got so into the weeds of, mm -hmm. you know, who, who these characters were on a personal level and how tough it is to be, you know, legacy kids who grew up like with a, with a, a mission yeah. and it just ruined their childhood. They just made them completely uh, incapable of being authentic human beings on their own. Mm -hmm. without, but then it never leans into the, to the comic book aspect of it. Not until season two, yeah. you didn't get like the, 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 the notion that the umbrella Academy was a team. Yeah. Until mostly the second season, which I enjoyed a lot more than the first season, yeah. personally. Yeah. So I mean, it's so it's, maybe it's, that's maybe that's what's going to end up happening, right? I mean, by now we're we're and again, I'm going to reference the comic. I can't help it. Like I can't help it. I to know. me, they're so intertwined. Um, the end of the season, without any giving away too many spoilers, is now more aligned as to where the first volume of the comic starts. So it'll be interesting to see that at this point now. We are armed. I don't know why you would take that, take the millions of dollars that you spent on this to do a prequel that doesn't I do know. anything just to lead into I the know. source material that you have. Yeah. It's very strange to me. It is. It is. And and, and again, uh, we started the show talking about that. And we'll, and we'll end the segment talking about that, too. What did you guys think? Um, you know, are you on board for season two? Uh, did you love it? Did you hate it? Did you want better special effects? That was a gripe online a lot, apparently. Meh. Give us the Facebook. Give us your uh, feedback in the Facebook comments. We will comment back when we come back. We do get to welcome one of the stars of the show, uh, Tyler Maine. He'll join us. He played Black Star. He will give us the behind the scenes look into filming the show, uh, what he thought of it when all was said and done. And we will definitely com compliment him because that opening sequence was pretty darn awesome. When we come back. <laughs> Welcome back to the Rogue Wave podcast. Happy uh, to announce the return of one of our favorite guests, Mr. Tyler Maine, star of Jupiter's Legacy. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me back, guys. Uh, we love having you, and we especially love the the, the stone backdrop. See, that's that's what it, that's what it's all about here is getting good backdrops for uh, for our guests. <laughs> yeah, he's in the castle. He's in yeah. the castle. <laughs> <laughs> So you you are a busy man. We talked to you last time, and you had a lot of stuff, you know, coming out that we couldn't quite talk about. Right. But now we can, and so it's so it makes it even more fun uh, to have you on the show. Uh, starting with Jupiter's Legacy, um, take me through um, what your reaction was finally watching it in its final form. You know, having been in the uh, in the show as uh, as Black Star. Yeah, you know, I mean, you film your portions of it and uh, you, you hope for the best. But then when you see it all put together, it, it was just mind blowing. You know, the, the epic scale of it, it was telling the backstory of, of mm -hmm. how the union got their powers and, and all the struggles that they went through. And, and, and I think people can relate to it, too, you know, and, and jumping forward to today's stuff, mm -hmm. the, the family struggles and that. And, and uh, for me. Uh, Black Star is one of my favorite uh, supervillains I've played, you know, because he's a 
he's a cocky, fantastic, <laughs> you know, snide guy. He's way more than meets the eye when you see him. When you first see him, you yeah. know, he he, he kind of seems like one note, and then you and then you then you start to interact with him, you know, and you realize that the guy's way deeper than, than yeah. you thought he was, you know. Yeah. You, know, you see, he's intelligent, you know, and you yeah. find. Him- the doctor and in, and it just raises all these other questions like wow how did how did black star come about you know so i'm hoping that uh in the future we get to dive into that stuff yeah, yeah. in the comics it's funny too because he has such a small uh role i mean i think he's he's really just shows up he kind of gets pummeled and then and then kind of goes off and and you never see him again um in the process of being cast for the role was it something that they expanded for you or was it something that they had already originally planned to kind of have him be more of a central figure in this, in the season? You know, I think that they had planned on it being uh, a bit, taking a bigger part in it. Um, but like, like you say, when, uh, when I got the audition and uh, of course I said to Renee, Hey, I need these Jupiter legacy comic books. And yeah. I read the comic book and I'm like, you know, Black Star got the crap beat out of him. <laughs> like, oh, I hope this is a little different. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> you know, and then and then uh, reading the stories, I was like, wow, okay, you know, this guy's he can he can really be a, a you know formidable presence in this. So yeah, I was like, I was very excited. I was very excited. And then when I found out I got the role, I was even. Double even more to, yeah <laughs> yeah we had actually gonna do to me you know with all the prosthetics i was like oh shit <laughs> <laughs> you know? that's the that's the thing that i marvel at too is i mean just how intricate the costume was uh and i and i barely recognized you underneath all that and that's and that's you know again how is that see like to see it all up on screen like to see yourself transformed in, into an alien creature i mean it's got to be kind of surreal right yeah, you know, I, I mean, it, it, uh, the process changed into Black Star. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. I mean, I got to take my hat off to KMB FX. Those guys are phenomenal over there from the, the concept art to, to everything. Like when I first walked in there for, to get my life cast and everything for this, I saw the concept art for it and I was like, wow that's my character <laughs> all right okay we can do this you know and then yeah. they started gluing pieces on me and and i had uh, i think for my head and face mm-hmm. uh eight eight or nine pieces glued on you know <laughs> and uh it took two and a half hours to get ready and, and then you put on that big heavy suit it was intense but when they do the final touch-ups on the airbrushing on you you know and you open your eyes you know, every morning I was like, "Oh, Black Star's back. Let's go." <laughs> uh, yeah, I was gonna ask: Is it? Does it? Um, every a lot of people say that it, it makes acting a little easier because uh, because you you look and you can see yourself. You can't see yourself anymore, so you get you actually feel like a a, a completely different creature, completely different uh, uh, being. So I was wondering if you felt the same way. Did it did it make it easier to find Black Star? When you when you were all when you see that all coming on like piece by piece it would be transforming me into Black Star which was fantastic and you know and, and then after you're sitting there for two and a half hours you, you got the pissed off attitude you need <laughs> <laughs> Black Star is um, not only is he um, and we'll get into this because we, we we talked about it in our review. Um, one of the most impactful uh, characters because he sets in motion, you know, one of the main storylines of the, of the show. Uh, But, but in reality, he also actually, he sets in motion two, two. I mean, you're actually responsible for two of the biggest storylines in the season uh, to date. Let's talk about the end of this uh, end of the show without giving uh, end of the season without giving spoilers. Um, were you privy to to Black Star's role in the cliffhanger that everyone is talking about, or was that something that you were not allowed to know? You know, going in as to like where your you know where the origins of that Black Star kind of came from. I mean that that all kind of changed and evolved. There there was uh, a different ending. Oh, season one. So and and then bringing that in and and exposing what they exposed. Uh, I I think help kick it up a notch yeah you know but but i am the one that 
tests utopian on his code. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, well, my question is, so did you know you knew about the changed ending or did you find out when the rest of us did? Oh, no, I knew about the changed ending. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So at least because I know I know that there's so many times where people are, you know, kind of like, you know, kept in the dark about everything. And, and even even the actors are, you know, have come up and been like, I didn't know this was going to happen. So let's go to the let's go to the look to the front of the um, uh, of the se- of the season. Uh, the pivotal battle um, we were commenting that's to us was the most visually striking, um, you know, part of it. You know, how much was CGI? How much was that you, uh, you know, in the suit battling, um, you know, take us through that, that whole scene. It was me uh, doing some of the close up stuff. Uh, I had a stunt double that was uh, doing some of it. And then of course they got to come in there and polish it all up with the CG. And uh, it, uh, the end result was just, amazing yeah insane yeah yeah it's, a, it was, it's the biggest sequence in the in the entire show yeah. it's like the yeah, biggest it, moment in the show yeah it took three months just about three months of uh rehearsals to get that done you know to get that to the point and then we only had a little short period of time like a few days to film it and yeah it was like oh my god how are we gonna get it all in <laughs> you know? but uh we did and it turned out pretty good so yeah. how is it how is it Filming like in front of a green screen and, and, and you know, wh- where you know a lot of CGI is going to fill in the blanks uh, of a lot of the stuff that's happening. Is it, is, it, is it difficult as an actor to do that? Is it something that you're just kind of used to at this point now? You, you know, you get used to it. Hopefully they have good concept art and, and, and what you're looking at. And uh, for the for hilltop battle, we had the whole, uh, the hilltop was built and it was all uh, crazy up there. So we had all of that. And then, of course, you had to imagine what you're dealing with. And I just go stand in front of the concept boards and look at it. And then, okay, so this is going to be this way and just take it from there type of thing. No, that's, that's pretty incredible. And Hassan had kind of mentioned, too, I mean, just in terms of like setting, setting things in motion. You said you read the comics. One of the big things we talked about in our review is I couldn't help but... I couldn't detach myself from the comics when I'm when I'm watching the show. And I wonder, you know, if, if, whether it's a good or a bad thing. Right. I, I don't know, because I'm sitting there saying, like, I know they're going to get to an island because I know the comics. Right. And, and so, um, you know, how deep did you go into the comics? Because, you know, Black Star is really only in the first volume. Did you read the, the you know, volume two as well? Did you know uh, more about the backstory or, or is it something that, you know, you, you learned a lot also kind of as you were kind of filming? Yeah, I, I knew a lot about the, the, the backstory because I did I read the entire comic hoping Blackstar would come back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, this has got to be a mistake. He's going to come back any any moment now. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I got quite a bit of the backstory, but it's even different from yeah. the film. And, and that's the thing. I mean, like, like you can only tell certain things in a uh, graphic novel or, or a comic book Whereas you have, like, they were originally going to th- talking about doing it as a feature, which I'm glad they didn't. Interesting. If they would have done it as a feature. Black Star might have had the same fate. So I'm glad that they took the time to tell the story. And I mean, when you watch it back to back, it, it kind of plays like one real long movie, which is amazing. I mean, I was I was blown away, but by, by the the stylistic filming of it and everything, and the and the, the the magnitude of it. Yeah. We, we, we were also, and that was something in our discussion too, in how the, the creators decided to where to start the story. Uh, because in the comics, again, you know, we're so much further along. Uh, the, the Brandon relationship is, is different. The Chloe relationship is sort of the same, um, you know, but, but everything about it is kind of like sped along. And now instead we we're getting gaps filled in that we didn't, you know, we didn't have before. So, um, you know, what did you, what did you think? Um, you know, in terms of how the decision of where to start the story. Uh, you know, I mean, it's, they, they obviously had ideas and have ideas where it's going to go next. I'm excited to see where it is. I liked where it was. Like you say, the comic book, you get to it a lot quicker. Mm-hmm. And the story evolves quicker because it has to. Yeah. Um, it's going to be interesting to see where they go with it. Yeah. What happens next? 
Are you going to break it? Can, can we break the news season two? Yeah. 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 <laughs> we, we have our rule on the show. No, well, let's something. not get our guests fired. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Please, no, I, 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 I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping I get, get to uh, come back. I hope there is a season two, first of all, and yeah. then I, hope I get to come back. And I also uh, uh, I'm hoping for more of the backstory for Black Star and, and explaining yeah. you know, where Who he would- came from and how. And, and you never know. He may team up with uh, one of the other characters. It's- <laughs> it would seem the way they set him up and the way they elaborated on his inner character. Um, that there's going to be a lot more to come with Black Star, you know? Um, so I wouldn't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of comic books, you have a new comic book that I, I was told you can, you can finally talk about now, coming out. Yes, I can finally say, yeah. Uh, you know, the, the Last Spartan is a, a project that I optioned quite a while ago. And uh, it is basically, okay, so you... Um, It'd be the uh, equivalent of like a, um, God, I'm having a brain fart right now. <laughs> it's very intimidating on our show. <laughs> we'll, we'll fix it in post. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's like a Sons of Anarchy mixed with Punisher mixed with human trafficking. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of interesting. And we've actually uh, signed the uh, writer, which is Christopher Priest. Oh, that's great. Oh, wow. Yeah. Christopher Priest is going to be writing. I've done several Zooms. Both Renee and I have done several Zooms with Christopher. And, I mean, he he understands the characters. He's got the same attitude. And, you know, I want I, I want it to be gritty and dark and, and intense. And so that's going to be coming out pretty soon. We're, we're starting that ball. And What's, uh, what, how, what vehicle, what company are you going to release, uh, release it through? We're not sure yet. You know, that that's uh, all on Renee's side of the, the game. I'm <laughs> just like, you know, hey, I want to do this project. This is what we're doing. Let's go. And she goes, oh, my God, could you think of anything bigger that you want to do? I'm going, well, okay, let's take this to the next level. That's great. So, the the just, Renee in question to our audience is Renee Gearlings as well, who is the, um, you know, she's the managing editor of Rogue Matter. And she's also been in the comic book industry for many, many years. Um, which include Top Cow, which is, I guess, uh, how you guys had met originally, which is which is pretty yeah. cool in in, in the Comic Con sphere, and and we've actually met you there as well too, which was you know small world, it all it all comes full circle. Um, you have main productions as well. Um, main, can you give yeah. us an update on everything that's going on with uh, with that? Yeah, main entertainment. Uh, main entertainment. Sorry, Compound Fracture is out. Uh, Penance Lane is out, and they are uh, on all platforms. So please check them out. Uh, check me out at uh, the real Tyler Main on Instagram and Tyler Main on uh, Facebook, Twitter, and everywhere else. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, Tyler, we uh, thank you so much. We, like I said, we, we the, the best the best part of Jupiter's Legacy was the opening battle sequence for us. Like we were both like, "Yep, no nail on the head," uh, and and you nailed it. So uh, it, it was awesome, and we hope that uh, we get to see you back, you know, for season two. Yeah, fingers crossed, guys. Fingers crossed. All right, Tyler Maine, when we come back, Hassan Godwin's Rogue Rage. Thanks. Welcome back to the Rogue Wave Podcast. I want to thank Tyler Main for joining us as well. Uh, he's part of the Rogue family uh, inadvertently, uh, but you know his wife Renee uh, works with Rogue Matter. She's fantastic. So thank you, Renee, for for wrangling your husband to get on our show and talk to us about Jupiter's Legacy. We were really excited to have him. All right, this is the part of the show where we hand the reins off. I get to relinquish first chair. And we give it all to Hassan Godwin for Hassan's Rogue Rage, all the rage in the pop culture universe. What is going on in Hassan's world? Nothing, nothing at all is going on in my world. It's the <laughs> end of the segment. It's good talking to you. We'll, it's we'll, been fun. We'll do, we'll do this again next week, I guess. <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> um, I, I think... Um, I, I think my issue, I have an issue. I'm starting to develop an issue with... Um, not so much the stories, all these stories taken as an individual uh, entity. 
are interesting and and intriguing and uh, compelling blah 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 all those all those uh, wonderful ten dollar words you can mm-hmm. use for them but taken in conjunction with each other like in context with each other on all these streaming services and all these new events that we're getting we have currently active three different parodies of dc justice league yeah um if you don't count Justice League in and of itself, which <laughs> right. is kind of like a de- deviation of the actual, you know, source material in it in and of itself. Yeah. And um, the boys are very satirical, very cynical, uh, you know, idea of a corporate, you know, corporately funded Justice League, you know, mm-hmm. whose, whose goals are, you know, the, the morals. There's a lot of moral flexibility or ambiguity in, in yeah. general. Um the i i think the invincible the the what is it the global what are those the heroes oh, the the yeah. you know the like heroes the of the globe team. or something yeah yeah. The, yeah um i believe that they you know they i don't think that they were um particularly bent right but they you know i mean spoiler alert something really incredibly <laughs> terrible happens to them right so in the very first um, episode yeah yeah um Yes. So, but I mean, if anybody hasn't watched the Invincible mm-hmm. yet, spoiler, you know, because something, 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 uh, something out, unexpected. Yeah, something earth shattering happens to the to the to the, the global team. Um, but I mean, in that on that team in and of itself, there was like a super uh, a Wonder Woman parody and a Green Lantern parody, and yeah. a, you know, so and it, we don't really have direct parodies in. Uh, in the union and uh with uh jupiter's legacy yeah but it is a justice league you know right uh, it's like what uh, avatar man and, and wonder out. woman got married yeah kind of thing. you know in, in and of itself yep and so it just kind of struck me like is everybody in comic books just waiting to do their own version of the super friends or yeah. you know, it's just or it's just like um wildcats and young blood yeah we're just just the x-men you know, just a, a knockoff X Men, right? Um, and, and and say what you will about them, there's the, the comics themselves have yielded really good things, but they they are right, right. You know, they was are. There, was know. there was the creator's take on books yeah, they were actually kind of already w- working on, right? And so, I mean, you got Warblade and Wolverine. You know, you yeah, got yeah, you know, right. got this guy with the claws, and then there's the the person with the, you know with the mind powers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you have Watchmen. And Watchmen is another allegory on on the super. So is that all we have? Is that as far as the as the medium is going to let us stretch? Where we're we're not since we don't have license. I think license is the only thing standing in everybody's way. We don't have license to these particularly uh, iconic characters such as Superman, Batman, uh, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, Aquaman, blah blah blah. So everybody's just going to. Everybody was forced out of necessity of marketing and of yeah. of legality to come up with their own versions of these characters, just so that they could just do morally, you know, ambiguous or morally questionable things with these characters, right. or you know, or, or make some kind of statement about like the you know about the corporate influences on everyday things and in the, the you know the hidden dark money and you know this and that. I get it; it's all great, but I mean, after like the third or fourth. Iteration. iteration of it yeah i don't I, i'm starting to question how creative these creative teams are you well know? You, you hit the nail on the head right it actually goes back to watchmen and alan moore uh famously went to dc and was like hey i want to do this like twisted story on superheroes because really you got to be insane to put a costume on and go out and fight crime um so, so it, and they were like are you kidding that's our bread and butter we can't do that <laughs> it ironically <laughs> enough it was the fundamental question when i created the sire which is my creator owned superhero book i was like no one if i fight superpowers i'm not i'd go on tv i'd be like a millionaire like i wouldn't want to go and you know fight crime and so the idea is well, all right he's got to have a costume that forces him to 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 be a straightforward superhero story because otherwise there's no way there would be a straightforward superhero story um there's that in, in the sense of wanting to take superheroes and kind of flip them on their head. And that was what Alan Moore's original intention was. I think with today's crop, you have people that want to work on properties like Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman um, either don't get the opportunity or, like we kind of said, they want to own it, right? They don't want their creations. Think about it. Uh, we talked about it, what, two weeks ago, Falcon and Winter Soldier, and who 
you know, who do we talk about? We talked about the Brubaker. creator of Winter Soldier, Brubaker. Yeah. Now, ironically, this was his take on their characters. And it became this multi-billion dollar franchise or part of a multi-billion dollar franchise. I think that's the so warning. People just label. don't want to do that. They don't. But, and, and, but I, I get that. Yeah. That's fine. But I just don't understand. It, is that is it you, you, you kind of touched on that in the previous segment, in the first segment about like people not being able to access it unless they know the, right. you know, the, 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 the essence of what these characters yeah. are supposed to be. Right. So it's like, OK, that's supposed to be the Superman guy and that's supposed to be the Batman guy. Right. So now I know where I'm, you know, now is 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 it that we don't get new comic books and new ideas because nobody will be able to comprehend them if you know with a, a completely new take on on it's heroes and yeah it's that and then likewise i think the creators just they don't want to part with their best ideas because now there's so much money in are having they, your own here's here's this is take. a hot take are they their best ideas if your <laughs> if your idea is just a parody of someone else's of, of, of another idea but right. like slightly skewed you know, slightly bent and and it's always the moral bend. It's not like they take right. It's not like they take the the hall of villains, right, and make them into heroes. Like it's not like they bend it the other way. It's always right. you take the paragons of great of virtue, and then and then just totally make them corporate chills or just totally make them you know morally you know ambiguous or whatever like that. I mean, and, and the thing is, when we got Justice League, we almost got the same thing because we technically got a dark Superman or a, a Superman yeah. was the was very much angled as a dark superman he always i mean the 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 thing about the source materials he always did the right thing at the end of man of steel and the end of uh, batman versus mm -hmm. superman at the end of the justice league but you know even the 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 you know justice league right he still like did the yeah. right thing so i mean that superman isn't bent but he's but he's played as bent he's played yeah. as but like everybody's afraid that he'll he'll be bent you know yeah. and they love those laser eyes they love just him vaporizing everybody <laughs> with laser eyes like so then homelander's got there's laser that eyes temptation and, though right i mean there's that temptation of sitting there and an looking omni man at superman. In, in invincible laser right. eyes you know right. like i just you know it's like okay i get bad superman i get yeah. it i get he could do terrible terrible things to the earth i know like, can, I, I think it's i think it's again it's a reflection on society also right i mean we don't we don't believe in subtle right now anymore uh, we don't believe in, you know, I, I, we don't believe on what's, uh, you know, what is there on the surface uh, to try to promote, you know, positivity on the surface, but but knowing that humanity is corrupt underneath or can be corrupted very easily. Um, you know, it, it's it's a combination of everything. I, I, I do think ultimately now uh, the idea of, you know, parried, parodying or satire uh, of the Justice League. Yeah, I think I think at this point. I think you're going to see a lot of I, I see it on Kickstarter a lot. It's this, but it's it's not this because I think people are afraid to actually just tell a straightforward superhero story. I think people are also afraid. It, it's the same. It's the it's the Joss Whedonism that we kind of talk about in in movies that and TV shows that prevail right now where, you know, you're in the you're in a dire situation and it's not that you crack a joke. It's that it's that the people write the characters as if they've already seen this so many times before <laughs> that they're tired of being in the the situation that they're in even though to them it should be something that has stakes is is you know harrowing well, is yeah, troubling it's, it's supposed you're supposed to convey the stakes to the audience right like if, but what they're actually conveying seen... is the writer saying that i've seen this already before so you don't have to worry about this anymore yeah, or why I would i waste my time this. Right. I know no, you've you, seen yeah. this before. Right. Yeah, you, so. the, you, the reader, or you, the watcher, have seen this already, so you already know how it's going to come out. So I don't even need to bother raising the stakes or or putting the characters through something. And that's where we're at. I think. Well, nobody's world building, right? No. So, like, if you watch, um, if you watch Ragnarok, mm -hmm. regardless of what your feelings are, Ragnarok, a lot of people have him, you know, like not mm -hmm. so great feelings about Ragnarok. I I loved it, but basically, you took Thor. Who was like kind of a, you know, kind of a, you know, a heavy one note kind yeah. of, uh, you know, uh, character. I love Thor. No, no, no dust on him. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's he's kind of like a, you know, behold, you know, lightning. You know, that's pretty much Thor, right? And 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 missing the point, missing a lot of contemporary jokes and stuff like yeah. that because he's fifteen hundred years old. And you put him in this just this crazy environment, you know, in this crazy world 
where now it's just Thor coming to grips with being Thor and, you know, mm-hmm. losing his dad and losing his brother and this and all this stuff. And you've, you've got a story, right? You don't have to, you, you, he doesn't, he didn't have to Thor through the whole thing, you know, <laughs> like he, you know, he could, we've yeah. already established that. So if you just, take these characters and like uh like i said with jupiter's legacy if you just have, if you just lean into telling a story right instead of trying to use all this 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 uh this other stimuli to to assault the the senses yeah. of okay here's a battle here but then here's a meaningful story about a boy and his father here and then there's you know here's a stock market here we've got a period piece here with the stock market crash and then we got a kind of king kong allegory where they all get on a boat to go to this mysterious island to mm-hmm. this and that there's a lot of stuff there you know with all that st- well, all this stuff tossed into a salad people will be entertained yeah. it's like no if you yeah. just tell us a story if you pick one yeah. of those and just tell that story will be more compelled, you know? Yeah. But it's just, it just seems like, as, as I said the other day, um, when we were, t- we were having a, a similar discussion, like everybody wants to start with act two. Yep. Act one, they, everybody wants to rush through act one or just over inflate act one to, to, to whatever extent. So that they feel that they could get to the comfort zone of act two. So they could slow down and breathe. And it's not, it's not done that way. You got to start know why? with act one. You know why? Act one's the hardest. It's always yeah, the hardest because no one, no one ever sits around as a creative person and comes up with an idea and goes, man, I want to tell the family lineage of, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of, yeah. of Barbara meeting Joe and having be, be, betrothing uh, three twins that end up having, you know, relations. But with the people, so. the yeah. people who crack that code are the ones who, who yeah. have success. You know, yeah. when you cra- when you could get Alex Murphy, correct. Right. The five minutes that you're watching. Uh, uh, what's his name? Peter Weller, you know, twirling his gun around or whatever, and talking about his son to a partner that he's just met, and then five minutes later, you blow him away literally and turn him into a robot. And then the rest of the movie is him trying to get back. You didn't need to see his son. You didn't need to see all that other stuff because we knew exactly what that guy's mm-hmm. heart and mind were. You know, we just mm-hmm. we stuck with the character. That's. I mean, you got us with act one and then we're there for the ridiculousness of them turning him into a robot. And then his, the robot slowly discovering he used to be human, you know, in acts two and three, you know, yep. but you have to sell us with act one yep. and nobody's people are not doing act one anymore. No, nope. you know, they want to rush right through act one and just get to blowing stuff up. And in uh, <laughs> Jupiter's legacy, they didn't even blow anything up. <laughs> they didn't even do that. So, you know, I think, uh, I don't know. Um, I let question. me ask you with, with a minute to go, let me ask you a question. Have we reached the superhero threshold? In terms I was of- just about to say, I think we've, I think we've, <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to, I don't want to actually say, I think we've done everything that we could do with it. I don't want to say that because the five minutes later, someone will do something totally amazing. That's not my question. Actually, the superhero threshold for what people will want to watch. I, I, I don't, Nobody knows what people want to watch. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You, you, I don't know. I don't, I don't blame the audience yeah. really for liking or disliking some of these things. I blame the creators. I, I blame them for being afraid of their audience, you yeah. know? Um, and also for not learning how to tell stories. Like there's, it's a, there's a science to it, you yeah. know, and you got to learn it. You can't just jump in and start, you know, like this guy's got a costume on. There's like a story behind it, up. but, but I'll tell you about it next week. You know, I'm not up. telling you about it today. Yeah. We used to, when we were kids, we were making comics. We, that was our thing. We got to blow stuff up. We got to blow it up. <laughs> well, you can't start a comic. You're not going to do your first issue and say like, you know, I'll answer all these questions in issue 10. Just stick no, with me. No, no, we would literally 10. just every panel, just blowing stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were 12. You get what I mean though. That was our show tonight. Uh, again, I want to thank Tyler Maine. Uh, go check out Jupiter's Legacy. Let us know what you think. If you haven't seen it all the way through. Uh, one thing I will say for it, I managed to get all the way through it. That's that's a that's a that's a thumbs up right in and of itself. Next week we have a summer movie season. Uh, it, it's it's looking looking pretty good. Openings up, everything's opening up full everywhere. Uh, it looks as if the you know big delays are at an end. So we will preview all the superhero movies that will be coming out in the summertime and beyond. And uh, we will also do a little pop luck dinner and. Who knows? I'm sure there's some trailers coming out. 
Uh, I'm sure there's some rogue rage to be had, and we will maybe even spin the racks. We'll see you guys next week. Rogue Wave.